friends! Happy day one of the reading rush. I almost called it book tubathon, but it is not. It is the reading rush, and it is day one. Did I'm in a car. This is Andrew. You saw him in a video I did recently. We are right now driving, obviously. We had a family reunion vacation thing in Indiana and so now we are headed back to Tennessee. We're gonna hang out a little bit in Nashville today for funsies and then head home. But I did want to start the vlog because it's reading rush and it's day one and I'm excited. And I have two books that I did bring with me for the reading rush TBR. I don't have everything but I have two of the books out of the, all of the ones on my TBR with me. So I thought I would share them with you now. One of the ones that I have started reading is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. And this one is for the prompt to read a book with purple on the cover. And I'm really liking it so far. I'm only like 30 pages in, but it's an adult mystery thriller that follows the story of a woman who gets paid to stay at an apartment and crazy things happen in the apartment. And that's pretty much all I know, but that's all I wanna know. I really like it. I'm obsessed with the cover. It is so cool. It's like so hot pink. And even like the naked covers hot pink. I love everything about this already. And then I also have my read for a book that you wanted to read last year, as well as read a book in the same place for the whole time. I figured since I have a manga on my TBR, I could sit here and read it in the car and that will cover the prompt for reading a book in one place for the whole time. So I'm also going to read this on the way back home, sitting in this chair. I will check in with y'all probably when we get home. We're excited to get home. We miss our kitty cats and our bed. So we're gonna go to Nashville. We're gonna stop at my favorite bookstore ever. So I'll vlog a little bit of that and maybe get some good food and the drum store for Andrew and all that good stuff. So, okay, I'll check in with y'all later. I don't think we got enough time to sort out all the fights, yeah. to sort out all the lies. Oh, baby, yeah. Oh, no. There was a part of me that knew that. Still I'm caught by surprise oh. I thought you'd always be mine oh, yeah. I guess our dreams fell asleep There's no passion in the comatose yeah. Baby going down, 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 down yeah. Baby going down, 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 down yeah. Tried so hard to stay afloat Yeah, we keep moving like the river goes yeah. Baby going down, 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 down Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought it's time I'm letting you go This time I know it for sure right now. I have to show you guys. I don't know if you can see. 
Oh, my window. Look how pretty. I hope that car clip was decent. <laughs> I feel like I wasn't fully there when I was recording this morning because I was so tired. We went to bed so late last night, got up super early to travel seven and a half hours back home. And so I was just, my brain was like mashed potatoes basically. So apologies if that was a train wreck, but I am here to check in. It is 8, 10, p.m. I did complete my goal of reading The Promised Neverland Volume 5 in the car, which was awesome. It took me not long at all because it's a manga and it takes five seconds to read, but this was awesome. I am loving this manga. I know I haven't talked about it recently and that's because I literally haven't read a volume of this all year which is nuts. It makes me really sad because this is seriously one of my favorite mangas that I've ever read. I did talk a lot a lot about it last year, but I will go ahead and just give a quick synopsis. If you haven't heard of this manga, it is about an orphanage where the children are basically taken care of by this person called mom and they think that everything is cute and fine and well and you know sometimes the kids get picked up to go off to their new families, but they're actually not going off to the new families. They're going to be harvested as meat for these demons which is so dark it's so dark but it's like really intense and the kids are super awesome and they fight back and they try to escape and that's just following them and their story i love this character on the cover her name is emma and she is just so smart and brave and amazing and i just love her and yeah i'm just like super rooting for these kids so really enjoying this. I really want to pick up volume six like right now because the story is really taking off and I loved it, loved it, loved it. So this was a great start to my reading rush week. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and take a bath and relax and keep reading. Lock every door. I am like, I'm like 45 pages in, which is not much at all, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I've been reading a Riley Sager book, one of Riley Sager's book every month for the last two months. So this will be month three of reading all of Riley Sager's books. And I'm really liking a lot of them. There isn't one that I've like hated. I really enjoyed Final Girls, which I read last year, but I have a feeling I might like this one even more. So... We will see though. I've heard mixed reviews. I've heard people really like it and I've heard other people say it's super weird. <laughs> so I like weird though. So I think this could be a good thing, but the jury's still out. I'll let you guys know. I'll try and check in one more time today before I go to bed, but if not, I'll check in tomorrow. For now, I'm just gonna go relax and take a bath because I'm exhausted and I feel gross from traveling and I just wanna chill. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> of the reading rush. Yay! <laughs> I am a hot mess this morning. I slept in. It is 9.47, but it's day two, which is awesome. What are the plans for today? Today, I want to read and finish Lock Every Door, which is a lofty goal. I got to page 100 yesterday, and there are over 350 <laughs> pages of this book. It's lofty, but I also have off work for the next two days, which is great. I took a little extra time off um, after our family vacation to relax. I like always take time off after vacation because I need a vacation from the vacation. Like I just want to be settled in my home for a couple days. And also I knew the reading rush was coming up. So I thought it was an extra good excuse to kind of take off some time to just read and recoup for myself, which I'm really excited about. I'm very happy I did. I really think I can finish this because it's so easy to read. I love the way that Riley Sager writes. It's not super flowery. It's not like hard to follow in any way. 
way. There's not an overabundance of details. It's just very straight to the point and I love it. And I flew through the first 100 pages yesterday. It didn't even feel difficult in any way. So I have all day to read this and I really think I'm going to. It's starting to get creepy and I love it. I think it's going to be kind of like scary, which I'm really excited for. So we're following our main character who basically got hired to apartment sit in this really prominent apartment in Manhattan and it like overlooks Central Park and it's super beautiful and it's inhabited by like people who have a lot of money who are like wealthy doctors and authors and actresses and stuff like that and but there's a lot of like rules that she she's not allowed to have any people over at any time she's not allowed to like talk to the tenants she's not really allowed to talk about it so it's kind of weird there's weird stuff going on now there's weird noises she made a friend but then the friend is gone and so now we're trying to figure that out so I like it I think it's gonna be real good. And then I think I also want to try and start an audiobook. I have been in a very, very, very deep Stardew Valley binge <laughs> where all I'm playing is Stardew Valley on my Switch and I'm just having the best time. It's just like, it's so relaxing and I love it and I just, I just love Stardew Valley. So I want to see if I can get one of my other books on audiobook. So I really hope that either Crazy Rich Asians or Girls of Paper and Fire are audiobook. Best case scenario, it would be Girls of Paper and Fire because that one I'm like really intimidated to pick up the physical copy and it's probably out of, out of all my books on my TBR, it's the one I'm least wanting to pick up. But if it's Crazy Rich Asian, that, that's okay too. As long as I can get one on audiobook, that would be ideal. Girls of Paper and Fire. It's not looking good. No. Okay. So that's not on script for me. Let's look if Crazy Rich Asians is. Crazy Rich Asians is on audiobook. Cool. Okay. Well, that's good. 13 hours and 53 minutes. So it's basically a 14 hour audiobook. Okay. So I am going to listen to that on audiobook, which is great because that's the one that I also want to watch the movie adaptation for later this week. I'll probably start that as well. And then I look like a hot mess. I took a bath yesterday and I put a bunch of bath oil in my bath. That's like my new favorite thing is like oil. It just makes your skin so moisturized. And when you take a bath and put the oil in the bath, it like soaks into your skin skin and it's so good highly recommend you guys yeah it's like my new favorite thing but I got my hair all in the water and now my hair is crazy greasy <laughs> so I need to go take like a shower and look decent the Instagram challenge today seems really fun it's the choose an outfit inspired by a book sort of thing I'm just not good at that so I don't know I might peruse my books a little bit later and see if anything jumps out at me but I also might skip this one so we'll see I had a lot of fun with yesterday's but this one is just like it's not my forte to do an outfit with a book, but maybe I can, maybe I can try. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go make some coffee because I need some coffee and I'm gonna go try and be more of a human. This was a super long clip. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go now. Okay, bye. <laughs> is now 12 54 so basically one o'clock i have been playing stardew valley and listening to crazy rich asians for i probably did that for like two hours oh my gosh um <laughs> so i have been 
a bum so far today, which I'm completely fine with because I feel like I just needed that. But I am going to go outside now for a run. It's so beautiful out today. It's like 79 degrees out and it's sunny and the wind is blowing and it's just so beautiful and not crazy southern humidity, which is what normally summer consists of here. So I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm gonna go outside for a run and I'm really excited because it's just so nice out. I haven't been running in a long time though, so I'm a little nervous because I just haven't ran in a while, but that's okay, gotta start somewhere. I've been doing more like circuit training, weights and stuff, but I haven't been running in a few months. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's not awful. If it is, then I'll just walk, which is totally fine. But I would like to run because I love running. So we'll see what happens. I did want to check in with Crazy Rich Asians. I've been listening to the audiobook and I like it so far. I don't know if I'm gonna like it as much as I thought I was. I thought I was gonna love this book because I love tropes where everyone is super wealthy. I just think those are so fun to read about because it'll never be my reality. So I love to live vicariously through people who just have money to burn. But there's a lot of characters. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of like families and people and things to keep track of and it's a little overwhelming right now, but I'm not hating it. I just kind of want it to get going. And I kind of wish the story was mostly about Nick and Rachel who are like the two main like love interests. Like they're, they're dating and Nick is gonna take her to Singapore and she has no idea that his family is like insanely wealthy and she's about to get like the shock of her life, which I'm a little annoyed by. Like tell your girlfriend that stuff. If you've been dating seriously for two years, like tell her that. So anyway, I'm still enjoying it. I'm glad it's on audiobook. I think that's all I have. I'm gonna go outside and I will check in later. going for a hot run, coming home, chugging some water, and then making a giant smoothie. It's the best thing. I totally have a foot cramp going on right now. It hurts so bad. I've never had a foot cramp before and it's just not, it's not fun. It only happened like the last half mile or so, but it hurts, let me tell you. Yeah, I did five miles. I did not run five miles. Let me just clear the record there. I probably ran a total of maybe two out of all of the five miles. So I just run when I feel like it. I don't push myself too hard. Like I do like to challenge myself, but I also need to listen to my body. Even though it's 80 degrees, it's still hot and I didn't want to pass out and I haven't run in a while. So my my body's getting used to it again. Um, I wanted to jump on here and share a story because I just, I feel like when I run, I just reflect a lot. And that's one reason I really love running is because it gives me a chance to reflect on things. And I feel like God really speaks to me a lot when I run. There's something really humanistic about running, like making your body run. There's something just really like raw about it. And 
for some reason, I just like tap into this thing that I just feel really like vulnerable when I run. And um, I feel like God can really just speak to me a lot when I run. Anyway, I wanted to share a story just because I've, um, to be transparent, I've kind of been struggling a lot lately with my faith and just like my mental and emotional life in general. I've been having just a really hard time lately. Last week, Andrew and I received some news that really bummed us out just about some future things that we were really hopeful for didn't work out. We were really just kind of crushed, honestly, and confused. And our first immediate reaction was, oh, God, why? Like, we, we really thought that this is what you wanted. And we did everything we could. We prayed so much. We, we just, we wanted this and we asked for it and, and we really thought that it was going to work out and it didn't. So why? Like, why did this happen? I think you can't help but feel sometimes like, oh, God doesn't care. Like, doesn't, he doesn't want to give me good things. He doesn't want to give me the things that I want. So to backtrack a little bit, yesterday we were driving home, as you know already, from Indiana and I had happened to drive the last hour. Andrew was getting really tired and he asked me to drive, which is really rare already. He doesn't ever ask me to drive. He always really likes driving road trips himself, which is totally fine. But he was getting tired and he had asked me to drive, so I said okay. Also rare that like once we got into our city, Andrew kept sleeping. He just was totally asleep and I needed to put on my GPS to make sure I was getting home okay the right way. And the GPS took us this totally different way that neither Andrew and I had ever been before. But by doing so, I discovered this new running path that I could safely run on near our house. And lately I have been really desperate to go out for a run. I, I, like I said earlier, I love running. I really feel connected to myself and nature and God and things when I run. And I've just been wanting to run so badly, but it's been way too hot. I don't like running on a, on a treadmill. And running around in our neighborhood is fine, but it's just really hilly. And the safe loop that I can take around our neighborhood is like less than a mile. So it just gets really boring boring after a while to run that over and over and over again. But I would have never discovered this new running path that I'm been, that I'm like so excited about. It's just like a straight running path, straight sidewalk, safe, awesome, lots of trees and nature around. It's perfect. It's like the perfect path. And then I wake up today and the weather is just beautiful. It's perfect to go for a run. <laughs> and I think it just during my run, I was just, uh, this song came on that the words were something about, uh, you leave me in awe, you couldn't love me more. And I was just like hit and overwhelmed with this emotion about how God does care. Like he hasn't forsaken us. He hasn't forgotten about us. And he gave me just this little tiny thing. Had Andrew not fallen asleep, had he not have asked me to drive, we would have never found this new path. And had the weather not been good today, and had I not already had the day off, I would have never gotten to be able to go for this run. Where God so clearly played this song that reminded me of how much he does love us and care for us and gives us even these little things, these little tiny things of just like, here I am, I love you, I care about you, I want you to have this. And so like I just, I don't know, I just felt a lot of hope and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I don't really know why. I just felt really hopeful and even though this bigger thing didn't work out for us, I do feel that... God isn't done with us yet and that our dreams aren't done yet and that something will come in the future in the right timing and so that's just kind of what we're hanging on to so yeah I don't know it was a really good run run walk like I said I walked a lot <laughs> so but it was just really good it feels really good I'm really enjoying my day off I think I'm realizing that I need to take more days off in general throughout the months because I'm just really loving just kind of taking this time to rejuvenate and rest so anyway okay that was a lot, <laughs> but I just wanted to share it with you guys. I really need to go take a shower <laughs> and I'm gonna drink after my smoothie and chill out and I will check in with you guys probably when I've read more, probably later this evening. I'm not gonna keep checking in too much until I've actually read and I'm able to give you guys some updates. <laughs> so I will check in with y'all soon.
this is what it's like being married to a drummer. I think it's like past 11. I don't remember what I updated last, but I don't think I really updated anything from tonight after I got done from my run. So what did I do? I took a shower and I read more and I listened to more of Crazy Rich Asians and my husband came home and we went grocery shopping and I played some Stardew Valley and we had dinner. Oh, and I did the Instagram challenge for the day, which was the outfit thingy. I really liked the way mine turned out. I was happy to have found something that matched. It's pretty much it. I totally drank some coffee at like seven something and I thought it would keep me awake but I'm actually feeling pretty tired. <laughs> so my goal today was to finish lock every door but I did not. Um, I just I didn't but I am to page 200 and I know I can finish it tomorrow so I'm gonna like have a plan tomorrow. I'm gonna do like 50 pages in the morning 50 pages in the afternoon, 50 pages in the evening, and then I'll knock it out. It's starting to get a little scary, so I feel like if I read more tonight, I might be afraid when I go to bed because I'm a big baby. Even though I love these kinds of books, I just get pretty easily freaked out. So I think I'm just gonna go to bed and call it a night. Happy day three of the reading rush. It is Wednesday and I have the day off again today. It's my last day off. I'm like super not looking forward to going back to work tomorrow because I have really enjoyed this time off, but that's okay. I have at least one more day left. It is like 11 o'clock, I think. Or yeah, 10.52. And I woke up and I made some chai, and I read 50 more pages of Lock Every Door, and things are getting so good. I think this definitely has a good chance of being, like, one of my new all-time favorite mystery thrillers. Like, I just am loving the setting of her in this, like, creepy apartment with these people she doesn't know. I'm definitely getting, like, American Horror Story hotel kind of vibes, or um, even that one movie with that one actor guy... It's like room 418 or something like that where he it's like a scary movie where he is like a journalist or a writer And he goes and he goes into this apartment and then like all these scary haunted things start happening But yeah, things are like super getting interesting and I'm absolutely loving this. I know I'll finish it today This is just really exciting. What's on the agenda for today? I'm going to continue to listen to crazy rich Asians as well. So I'm gonna have some breakfast or some brunch, and I'm gonna go to Barnes & Noble. I want to pick up volume six of The Promised Neverland. I really hope they have it because I really wanna read it. And if I read that book and all the other books on my TBR, I'll have read seven books for the reading rush, so that would be awesome. I'm kind of not wanting to read Girls of Paper and Fire anymore. I'm just really not in the mood for it, and I don't want to force myself to read a fantasy book that I really do think I'll like, but I'm just not in the mood for because then I'll end up like DNFing it or hating it and I want to give it like a fair chance and I'm just not in the mood for a fantasy book right now. So I'm also going to look for a book at Barnes & Noble that will replace that prompt. I was going to read that one for the prompt where you had to read a book with five words or more in the title. I do also have a poetry book here, I think, with five or more words in the title, but that'll make it so that I've only read like two actual books for the reading rush, and then the other ones are just like graphic novels and mangas, which is totally fine, but I just, I think I can challenge myself to read another book maybe so we'll see I'm gonna take a look and see what I can find but if not that's like my backup plan I think I'm gonna stay at Barnes & Noble for a little bit and also work on some editing I have to edit my video for this week and I should probably start editing this vlog I always wait until I vlog an entire week and then I start editing the vlog and it's fine, but it's just like such a process. And if I start doing it now and do a little bit at a time, it won't be that big of deal. But yeah, when I do an entire week and then edit, it's like takes forever and it's not fun. Gonna work on that. I really need to jump on the Reading Rush website and update all my stuff. And what else? I need to be productive today. I need to clean my room. <laughs> I need to unpack all of my close because I have not. <laughs> Maybe go to the gym. I'm a little sore from my run yesterday, but I think going to the gym would be great. 
and I feel like there was more stuff, but right now that's all I can think of. So pretty packed day, good stuff. I'm going to go and make some food and some coffee, and I am going to read another 50 pages of this bad boy before I go to Barnes & Noble. I mean, I'll, I'll take you guys along with me and vlog a little bit and check in when I've read more and have more updates. I finally stopped running now With you I found my peace somehow Let go of every thought that was holding me back Yeah I'm in love with you in every way That joy you give me every day Makes me forget that I was troubled before Don't know if I'm dreaming I'm slipping away I hear your sweet voice Then I see your face I never knew you could love someone like me You climbed my tower And you set me free Okay, let's see. I have cleaned my room, which was awesome. I really needed to unpack. While I was cleaning my room, I decided to just get rid of all of the clothes that I have been hanging on to that just don't fit me anymore. I have so many clothes in my closet, well not anymore, but I did, um, that I have hung on to for six years, literally six years, when I had lost a bunch of weight and I was fitting into smaller jean sizes and smaller shorts and smaller shirts and I don't fit into those things anymore and I am on a journey of loving and accepting myself and my body and I just decided to clear out my closet of stuff I don't fit into anymore and stuff that I'm not going to fit into right now and I just decided that like I needed to purge myself from those clothes and it felt really good. I think I've hung on to those for a long time thinking oh well like this will motivate me or this this will allow me to basically shame myself into losing weight because I need to fit back into these jeans that do not fit anymore and it's just silly like they just needed to go and it feels so good to be able to go into my closet now and know that everything in my closet fits me and I don't need to feel that like embarrassment or shame or like 
make myself feel bad because I don't fit into those clothes anymore. Like, it's just a good thing. Anyway, I just wanted to share because I'm proud of myself for doing that. It was hard because like during the process, I would like try some stuff on that literally didn't even go over my butt, like could not fit into it at all. And I couldn't believe I could fit in that stuff at one point. So that was a little hard, but like I ripped the bandaid off and I did it. And I'm gonna bring those clothes to Goodwill and get rid of them. So yay, I did that. Then I went to Barnes and Noble and I got some things. Let me show you guys we'll go over here so as you saw i couldn't find volume six of the promised neverland they literally had five and then seven no volume six i was so bummed but i think i'm just gonna order it on amazon because i really want to really really want to keep reading that i picked up the girl from the other side which i read not last month maybe the month before the first one and i did really like it it's um really easy to fly through. There's not a lot of like words in this manga and it's basically about like this demon and this little girl and they're journeying together kind of through the woods and there's some kind of curse and the little girl thinks that her aunt is coming back for her but really her aunt abandoned her and there's just like a lot of stuff that's really not fleshed out yet and I think that's on purpose. Like it's a little bit confusing but I think that's because they're building the story. So I actually just sat in Barnes and Noble and read all of it and thankfully this totally counts for read a book with five or more words in the title because the girl from the other side has six so <laughs> it just flew that out of my hands <laughs> Um, so I was really excited about that. But yeah, I read this, which is great. So I have two books officially down. I am also flying through Crazy Rich Asians. I listened to it all while I was going through my closet and my clothes, and then also on the way to and from Barnes & Noble. I've just been listening to it nonstop. I think I only have a couple hours of it left. And then I only have a, like 50 pages left of Lock Every Door. So I'm flying through those still. I also got this really cute thing from Barnes & Noble. I'll show you guys really quickly. I got it from me and Andrew. <laughs> it's a Stranger Things mug. It's probably kind of hard to see with the cellophane still on it, but it's so cute and it wasn't that expensive and we're just a big fan of coffee mugs and we really, really, I really like Stranger Things volume, or season three. I thought season three was the best season so far. Andrew thought it was the worst. You guys should tell me what you thought about it, but I thought it was really fun. Okay, so while I was <laughs> drinking my coffee and reading my book, I got done and then I noticed that there were like a bunch of graphic novels on a display and I had already purchased like the manga and the mug, but I went over to the graphic novels just to kind of like peruse <laughs> and I saw the cutest and these were like middle grade graphic novels and I love middle grade graphic novels. I wish that there were so many more graphic novels when I was in middle school, when I was around that age because they're so fun and they keep kids like wanting to read and they keep me wanting. They're so cute. Like I want to read all of the Babysitter's Club middle grade graphic novels. Those look so fun. Anyway, okay, I'm getting on a tangent. Um, You can tell I've had coffee. I'm like talking a mile a minute. Anyway, I saw this really cute book and I had to get it. It was only like $7 and it's Catstronauts. <laughs> it's Catstronauts Mission Moon by Drew Brockington. And it's these cats that are astronauts. And they're so cute. <laughs> and even though The Girl from the Other Side and The Promise Neverland totally counts for the prompt to read a book with a non-human main character, I still got that one instead to also read since these are all non-humans. They're cats and they're astronauts and I'm so excited. <laughs> So I got that one and that's pretty much it for my check-in, I guess. I I'm gonna make some dinner. I'm gonna hang out. I've played some Stardew to relax. Um, I'm just like dreading going back to work tomorrow. I don't want to, but I have to, so let's just not talk about it, right? We'll not we just we're just gonna avoid it for now. So I'm gonna make myself some dinner and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna finish Lock Every Door, and the next time you see me, I will be talking about my feels about it because I have some feels about it okay bye I finished it Oh my gosh. <laughs>
What a ride. Okay, this was so good. This is one of my new favorites. Five stars, loved it, super weird. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, this was so dang good. Okay, I don't even know where to start. So I did see a few things like coming, like I could see a few patterns early on and I definitely knew that one of the people that ended up being the people that was the bad people <laughs> was bad in the beginning. Like I, I feel like that's fairly obvious, but I didn't mind because I thought the book was going one way. The author did an amazing job of like totally making me think that it was heading one direction. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like that's creepy. And I would have been fine if that was the ending, but then it totally went a different way. And it was so good and super satisfying. And I'm a fan. Uh, this was super twisty and I loved the twist at the end. I loved the mystery. I loved the thriller aspect. It's definitely scary. It'll get your heart racing. So if you like these kinds of books, Definitely recommend picking this up. I think it'd be a really fun one to add to your October TBR if you're looking for spooky reads during that time. This was so good. Also, I'm just like so visually obsessed with this book. I know I already talked about it, but it's just like, this is like my favorite kind of book. Like it's big and it's pretty and I just like, I literally love everything about this book. I'm so happy I read this. I couldn't put it down. I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So good. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is everything that my mystery thriller loving heart adores in these kinds of books. Yeah. I think my husband is getting home now. I'm gonna chill for the rest of the night. It's pretty late. It's like past nine o'clock and I do have to go to work tomorrow. So I should go to bed soon. Of course, I'm not very tired, but I'm gonna make some night night tea and maybe play a little bit of Stardew Valley, but then I really just need to go to bed. So I will check in with y'all in the morning. Did I mm -mm 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 -mm.